week. We begin in central Paris, where verdicts and sentencing have been announced for some of the 20 suspects who had a hand in the 2015 Paris attacks. 130 people lost their lives in those, the worst ever peacetime attacks on French soil, which targeted the Bataclan Theatre, six bars and restaurants and the National Stadium. Well, seven years on, large crowds are outside the Palais de Justice to hear the court hand down its verdict. Uh, that has come in the last 20 minutes or so. It's going to be a long process announcing all the verdicts. Uh, but uh, for now, what we know is that the lone surviving attacker has been sentenced to life in prison without the prospect of parole. That is um, Salah Abdus Salam, uh, who is in life in prison without the prospect of early release. Let's get more from France 24's Andrew Hillier, who's at the Palais de Justice in central Paris and joins us now. Um, Andrew, this is the toughest sentence possible under uh, the French justice system. Um, not much surprise, I'd imagine, uh, that this was handed down to Salah Abdeslam. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that, that sentence is exactly what the uh, prosecution had uh, recommended, and that's exactly what the judges have handed down to uh, Salah Abdeslam, the main defendant really, really here behind me uh, in the courthouse, the sole survivor of the uh, Islamic State group cell that carried out the attacks. Life without the possibility of parole. It means that he'll very likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. Now, in its ruling, the court said that Abdeslam had been guilty of being a co-author of the Paris attacks. The court threw out Abdeslam's claim that he had backed out of blowing himself up in northern Paris out of compassion for the would-be victims around him because they said that the vest, in any case, was defective. Uh, some of the other verdicts we've heard, uh, Mohamed Abrini, uh, colloquially, colloquially known as the man in the hat, uh, he was the man who was uh, travelling in the so-called uh, convoy of death with the attackers the night before the attack from Brussels to Paris. Uh, the court found that he had been an active member of the Islamic State group. He was found guilty of murder and attempted murder. We also heard a ruling in the case of Mohammed Mohammed Bakali. Now he's uh, he's known as he's been uh, known as the backbone of the uh, logistical operation uh, of the uh, Paris attacks. He was found guilty of complicity and uh, murder linked to a terrorist group. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Also, some of the verdicts for the childhood friends of uh, Salah Abdeslah, who grew up with him in Molenbeek, Mohammed Amri, who was guilty of providing logistical support and of helping Salah Abdeslam flee in the aftermath of those attacks. He, it was him, along with uh, Hamz, Hamza Atu, who uh, travelled with uh, Abdeslam back to Brussels after those attacks. Hamza Atu also found guilty of helping Abdeslam. Uh, we heard that uh, he, he put his head in his hands uh, when he heard that guilty verdict uh, being, uh, being read. Um, one thing we did also hear is that Farid Karkouch now, uh, he's the defendant who was accused of providing uh, false identity papers to the Paris attackers. Now, the court said that um, he wasn't, that they ruled that he hadn't been aware of, uh, that, that those identity papers would be used in the context of the uh, Paris attacks. So he was found guilty in the end uh, just of fraud. But yeah, a long night uh, ahead here as we uh, listen to those verdicts uh, trickling out uh, of the uh, Palais de Justice uh, just behind me. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Salah Abdeslam and then we've got, of course, these others who were tried in absentia, some who were assumed to be dead. Uh, and also reading the profiles of those who were on trial there, I mean, quite a number of them in the dock had actually fought with the Islamic State group in Iraq and Syria. And presumably that gave them uh, experience on the battlefield that was then used here on French soil. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, there were six of the defendants that are being tried today have been tried in absentia. One of them is in uh, is actually serving a prison sentence in Turkey and could hold vital information to the investigation, but uh, he's refusing to, to, to cooperate uh, with investigators. Five other defendants, as you mentioned, those five defendants are all, this, are all presumed dead to have been killed in Syria and Iraq. Another name worth pointing out is uh, Osama Krayem. Now, uh, 
He's accused of uh, helping the Paris attackers with their logistical, by giving them logistical support. He's also accused of, of planning a simultaneous attack at Amsterdam's Schiphol airport the night of the Paris attacks. And investigators know he was... Uh, he was part of the Islamic State group because in that uh, in that video um, uh, several years ago of a, a Jordanian pilot uh, being burnt alive that the Islamic State group produced, we could, investigators uh, have pinpointed Osama Krayam's face in that video. So yeah, investigators have had a hard time trying to trace back uh, the, the the trajectory of all of these of all of these defendants. But a lot of them they have they have come they have been able to show that they were in Syria and Iraq and they did make the journey. Back Back from Syria and Iraq to take part in either helping out with logistics in the Paris attack or helping out uh, in the attack itself. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that update. Andrew Hillier at the Palais de Justice in central Paris, thank you very much indeed.